Man's got a fresh trim after decades. Hey everyone, my name's Devon. I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Welcome to my channel. I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine and tech. And so if any of that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Welcome to your guide of all the Imperial College London accommodation halls, including a cheeky room and kitchen tour of By Hall. The information in this video has been gathered from the Imperial website and also my experiences and also my friends' experiences. So not only is there going to be factual information, but also personal information from people who have actually lived in that place. And if you guys are watching this video, I'm sure you'll be interested in a video that I made regarding me debunking some imperial myths and stereotypes. I'll be linking that in the description down below and also to your right. So moving on to this video, the way I'm going to split it up is I'll go and do a brief overview of things that apply to each of those halls and then I will split it up into each hall and go in depth on it and then talk about facts, any pros, any cons, prices, location and also one or two reviews from people who have actually lived there. And finally I'll do a side by side comparison to round off the video. This video is going to be a very very fat video so I know that most of you won't be interested in each of these hauls so I will put timestamps in the description below and also chapters on the video so scrub along to each separate part and I'd highly highly encourage this because I don't want you to be intimidated by the length of the video. So only go to whatever you're interested in, or if you're a fan just watch the entire video, you know it's up to you. And this video did take a long time to make so please drop a like down below to show your uh, support. And with that said let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so all of Imperial's halls are self-catered. There's two contracts up for grabs for the 2020 to 2021 academic year. One is the standard 38 week contract and another one is a 24 week contract that begins in January of 2021. This is quite unique to this year because of the current pandemic going on. There's also 24 seven on-site support for all halls. For the academic year 2020 to 2021, it's important to note that Imperial is not letting out any shared rooms anymore. So all of the rooms will be single rooms. Rents will include utility bills, internet access, contents insurance and the contribution towards the Hall Activities Fund. And each room will come with a bed, a chair, a wardrobe, a chest of drawers, a laundry basket, a bookshelf and notice board, a desk and a lamp and curtains and an internet connection. So we're going to move on to the Beanock that is Woodward. Woodward is a hall located in North Acton and the Woodward buildings form a contemporary student village with cluster style apartments and also a communal space for students to enjoy. On the screen right now you'll see where Woodward is located. Two minutes away is North Acton station which you can take to get to South Kensington in about 40 minutes. There's also an eye gym nearby and it's a really affordable gym and offers prices of £40 for the entire year. So if you're into making those gains, this is an ideal place for you to go. There's also an Asda nearby which you can get your groceries from. And Asda tends to be quite affordable, so it's really, really convenient to have. So Woodward has about 700 bed spaces, compromising of single en-suites and also twin en-suites. So some of the features of Woodward include a large common room with communal and pod seating areas, tabletop games and a TV, an open plan kitchen and living area with a dining table, a sofa and a relaxing lounge with a flat screen TV, free Wi-Fi access on all communal areas and communal study areas too. So the prices for the 2020 to 2021 academic year are being shown on screen now. They start at about 141 per week and go up to 163 per week. Now obviously this is the one for the 2020 to 2021 academic year and the most up to date pricing will be shown on the website. So I will link that in the description below so make sure you check that for the most up to date pricing. I had two friends that stayed over at Woodward and here are their experiences. So Francesca liked the fact that there are big rooms and that it's not very expensive. There's a big common room and every week there's an organised activity and you get to know so many people on the way to uni which makes you more motivated to go to lectures. Cheap shopping is literally outside the door and it has special deals for Imperial students. Although she felt that using the central line can be quite uncomfortable, hot and very crowded on the way to uni sometimes. So Pyme also loved Woodward, he thought that the quality of the rooms, the space in the kitchens and the large common room and the weekly activities were a huge sell. He liked that there were loads of shops super close by and the gym was a huge bonus as it's very cheap and doesn't get as packed as Ethos, which is Imperial's South Kensington gym. The only downside was a long commute to South Kensington, but it also meant that you'll form a big community with other freshers travelling to university. Moving on to Kemp Porter. So the Kemp Porter buildings are Imperial's new accommodation halls 
and they are being opened for the first time in September 2020 and they look absolutely mental. They're also located in North Acton right next to Woodward. On the screen right now you'll see where Kent Porter is located. I'll also put Woodward on there and two minutes away is North Acton Station which you can take to get to South Kensington in 40 minutes, obviously just like Woodward. iGym is also right there at a relatively cheap price. So the place has about 600 bed spaces compromised of a mixture of single on suites and twin on suites. Now they're arranged in cluster sort of flats and each with their own kitchen and some of the features of the place includes a large common room with pod seating areas, tabletop games and a TV, sofas and a lounge with a TV, included Wi-Fi as with the other halls and also spectacular views of central London. The prices start at £146 per week and go all the way up to £168. Unfortunately because this is a new hall I don't have any experiences with you guys that I can share but it's looking like an absolutely lit place. So moving on to Wilson. So Wilson is an accommodation hall located in Paddington next to the St Mary's campus. It's made up of 22 interconnected houses. Included you'll have a free access to the gym and the pool there, but if you like pumping some real iron, it's probably not gonna suffice. And a fun fact for you historians out there, Wilson House was actually named after Charles Wilson, which was the physician to Sir Winston Churchill. But who am I kidding? You're applying to Imperial, so you're probably not a historian. So on the screen right now, you'll see a map of where Wilson is located. And it will take you about 30 minutes to walk to the South Kensington campus across Hyde Park. Or if you want to take the tube, it takes about 25 minutes. The area is also frequently served by bus services. Overall, there are about 360 bed spaces available this year. They comprise of a mixture of single en suites and twin en suites. And some of the features of the place includes a shared kitchens, large multi-purpose social space, TV and tabletop games lounge, and a communal study space. The prices for the 2020 to 2021 academic year range from £114 per week to £230 per week. I had one friend who lived in Wilson and he's happy to share his experiences with Wilson right now. So Felix thought that being next to St Mary's Hospital is very convenient as you could go to that library instead of Central Library, which tends to be a lot more crowded. The gym is also very decent and discounted for students and fewer people use it as compared to Ethos. Basic shopping is just outside your door and the nearest tube stations are really close. Paddington is also a 5 minute walk away, which is very convenient if you travel via the uh, GWR. And for the negatives, he thought that it's a very old place and not many rooms have ensuite bathrooms, which makes the situation quite difficult, especially for next year with Covid. And he says that if you get an ensuite room, it means that you'll be part of the annex building and all residents in that building share one kitchen, so it can get quite dirty. So moving on to Pembridge. Pembridge is a hall located in Notting Hill, which is home to the world famous Portobello Market, which is known for its secondhand clothes. So if you're into that Primark vibe, it's ideal. The Portobello Road Market is known for its secondhand clothes, its antiques, and also the Notting Hill Carnival. So basically, Pembridge Hall is made up of three Gregorian houses interconnected together. Shown on screen now is the location of Pembridge, as well as this tube station and the campus. There are about 84 bed spaces available this year. So some of the features of this hall include two large shared kitchens and a common room that make it easy for you to socialize. Bedrooms are equipped with their own fridges, which as they say, makes it a perfect study retreat. The prices for the 2020 to 2021 academic year start at 90 pounds per week and go all the way up to 180 per week. And for Pembridge, I had two friends that stayed there and this is what they had to say. Anisha loved the fact that Pembridge is right next to Notting Hill tube station. So it's really easy to get anywhere. She loved the overall vibe of the place as Pembridge is made up of three interconnected houses rather than segregated flats. So she got to know a lot of people. She also thought that living in Notting Hill is a once in a lifetime experience and she liked the fact that Pembridge has quite a central location and is close to everything. However, she thought that the room sizes were unfair as people paying the same price could get different sized rooms. Not all the rooms have en suites and the place is quite old. She feels that Pembridge needs a renovation. There's only two kitchens in the whole place for 100 people and so the kitchen ends up getting very dirty and attracts mice. She probably wouldn't live there again if given the choice. So another friend of mine said that Pembridge was both great and awful. She thought that it was amazing to live in Notting Hill as that's never going to happen again. And the fact that it was quite a small hall meant that she was quite close to all her friends and it gave it a nice community feel. But on the other hand, there were only two kitchens for about 95 people. So the facilities weren't very great and there was a huge mouse problem. She had a great time there, but she says that the place needs a renovation. So moving on to Xenia, meaning hospitality or courtesy for those who are far from home. So you'll feel very welcome there as soon as you step through that door. So Xenia is located in Waterloo right next to the River Thames. And it's really close to some of the big name attractions like Big Ben, 
London Eye, Shakespeare's Globe Theatre and also the Tate Modern Gallery. And if you like bantering about art, you're going to love Tate and it's free so it's essentially free banter. The nearest station and campuses are shown on screen now and it takes about 30 minutes to get into South Kent. There are about 153 bed spaces available this year. Some of the features of this hall include study rooms, games rooms and a cheeky internal courtyard with a garden and the prices for the 2020 to 2021 academic year are shown on screen now. They start at 114 to about 222 per week. And luckily for you guys, I have one friend who stayed there and this is what he had to say. Jakob loved Xenia. He felt that the location was perfect as it's located right opposite Waterloo Station, so it's easy to walk back from most clubs. It's also lovely to explore central London, and the commute is only about 30 minutes by tube to South Kensington, but he said that this did increase his travel costs and he needed a travel card, but it gave him the freedom to hop on the tube and explore London. The halls had about 10 people per kitchen which meant that he could get to know a lot of people and he said that he would choose it again in a heartbeat. So Bite Hall is my ex, it's where I stayed during first year and I did make an in-depth video about this where I go into all the pros and the cons and my experiences and everything. I will link that over there and also in the description below so make sure you check that out. But I will go over Bite briefly in this video as well. So Bite is located on the South Kensington campus and it includes a club and a bar and a student union within the premises itself and because of this it can be quite noisy which is what you need to take into mind if you're applying there. Getting a quiet room can be a hit or a miss but um, another thing is that it also has a no under 18s policy because of the bar and the club being there so you need to make sure that you're over 18 if you're applying there. But on the other hand, um, because of this, it's also one of the most liveliest places. Everyone gathers there, there's something going on at all days of the week. It's just, it's just more lit, what can I say? Although there is a downside to Bite, and that is that it has a large international community because they are loaded, so they tend to often go to Bite, and um, they tend to stick to their own sort of crowds and languages and cultures that they're familiar with, so they may not be as social as um, some of the Brits may be. So shown on screen now is Bite Hall, as well as East Side, South Side, the station and also Imperial's campus. So there are about 275 bed spaces available this year with the different types of beds being shown on screen now. And some of the features of Bite Hall include two common rooms with a multitude of different games to play. And there's also shared kitchens within a group of five to 10 people. And the prices for this academic year, which is 2020 to 2021, start at about 171 pounds per week and go up all the way to 280. And they're being shown on screen now for each of the rooms available. So because I made the video about my personal experiences already, I thought I won't mention my experience, but I managed to get one of my other friends and this is what he had to say about Byte. The Pranav loved the fact that Byte was super close and deeply misses the short commute time that he used to have, but he says that the room sizes can vary hugely, as we had a massive room but the others down the corridor were quite small. And now, what I didn't include in the Byte video about my experiences was the actual room tour and uh, kitchen tour and that was because I made it three years ago so it was really really cringe and honestly I never thought it would see the light of day but I had a change of mind and uh, don't don't dislike it because of the cringiness okay it was, it was three years ago um, but here it is. Alright so let's go into my room here we are I got my cupboard looking top notch all the way there on my bed it says life's the beach classic I've got my rucksack there that's my roommate's bed over there hasn't really done much at the moment but um yeah it's my bed that's not my bed <laughs> it's my table and my chair and yeah this is the room it's quite a spacious room actually you can look out the window. There's the uni right there. Nice. And we got some more people, two more rooms. And there's another room. And then we got our kitchen. You look outside. It's almost like a five star hotel, lovely view. And so, uh, here's the other side, this one's even better. Oh, look at that, yeah. <laughs> bins, who doesn't love bins? So east side is located in Princess Gardens, which is off the road to the South Kensington campus. 
and is also adjacent to Southside, which is another one of the Imperial's halls. Eastside and Southside are kind of like brother and sister, they're very similar in, in place and also the types of accommodation that they offer. So Eastside and Southside are right off Exhibition Road, which attracts over 11 million people every year, which are here for its cultural and educational institutions such as the Victoria and Albert Museum, the National History Museum and also the Science Museum. So shown on the screen now is the map with the location and the nearest tube station as well as the campus. And this year there are about 408 bed spaces available and some of the features of the hall include a convenience store, two common rooms and a cafe slash restaurant slash bar. It's also located right next to Ethos, which is Imperial Sports Centre and houses a swimming pool, a gym and also the um, activity hall. And the gym is a very very affordable £40 for the entire year, so it is an absolutely bargain of a price if you guys like going to the gym and making some games. Eastside also has specially adapted kitchens and ensuite study bedrooms for students with disabilities. It is in general a bit more expensive than Byte, but the prices are being shown on screen now. It starts at about 260 per week and goes to 300 plus. Uh, it's, it's very expensive. In terms of experiences, I had two friends that stayed over at Eastside and this is what they had to say. So Varnock said that the pros are it's got the best location, you can't beat South Kensington and it's so close to uni so there's reduced transport costs. All rooms are ensuite and Eastside and Southside have a total of 722 bed spaces so a lot of the friends you'll meet will be in the area. Princess Gardens is lovely and there's a bar, restaurant and convenience store on site. It's right next to Hyde Park and Royal Hall. And Ethos being super close by is a big pro. However, he said that the cons were why it's more expensive than the other halls and a lot of students stayed in the rooms instead of socialising in the kitchen. But he says that you will still meet plenty of people. But he says that you will still meet plenty of sociable people in Eastside. The on-site bar and convenience store can be quite expensive though. Shubham loved the fact that Eastside is really close to campus and it's got good rooms with ID activated doors. He loved the fact that there's an Eastside restaurant, a pool table and a table tennis, but he went to the bike common room as it was nearby. There were good hall seniors and £3 cinema trips. However, the cons were that Eastside was a lot more expensive than Bite, but offered a similar quality and distance from campus and the common room closed a lot earlier than Bites. The Eastside restaurant was never open and didn't really have a lot of food options. Moving on to Southside, Southside is very similar to Eastside as I mentioned earlier on and if you're here to see Southside you should probably go back and watch the Eastside one as well because everything I said about that applies here as well. Shown on screen now is the map with the location and the nearest tube station as well as the campus and there are about 314 bed spaces available this year and some of the features of the place include wall mounted TVs in all kitchens, a common room, a student social space with a table tennis table, table football and last but not least rooms adapted for people with disabilities. The prices for this academic year range from 248 to about 302 so roughly on the same par with, um, with Eastside as I said before they are kind of brother and sister but in general, these two halls tend to be a bit more expensive than Byte, but offer roughly the same kind of experience. And in terms of experiences, I have one friend who stayed there, and this is what she had to say. Serena loves Southside, as she was quite close to all her friends, and could easily visit them in Eastside and Byte. The only issues were the kitchens, as there were a lot of people to one kitchen that got quite dirty. The walls were very thin, but in general, the hall was quite amazing, and she loved the experience of living in South Kensington, and the fact that it was so close to campus, and Hyde Park. So we're going to move into the final hall which is Parsons House. So Parsons is located in West Kensington which is right next to the Charing Cross campus which is home to the, uh, the lecture halls, the dissection rooms, a graveyard and also the medics. Furthermore it's about 15-20 minute walk um, to the Earl's Court Exhibition Centre and also the restaurants and the shopping and the nightlife of Hammersmith is already close by. Parsons is basically made up of a cluster of four bed flats which make up the first three floors. Shown on screen now is the map with the location of Parsons and the nearest tube station as well as the campus. So there are about 46 bedrooms available this year and some of the features for Parsons house include shared kitchens for every cluster and access to the common room with a TV, a computer and a pool table in the Golding House which is uh, perfect for you guys to hang out with your newfound friends. Furthermore, you get access to a shared garden where you can host barbecues uh, to your heart's content. And the prices for this academic year are fairly simple, they start off at £86 per week. And now I did have one friend that lived over at Parsons and this is what he had to say about the place. He says that Parsons is quite a cheap place and its location is ideal as it's right next to the Charing Cross campus which is perfect for medics. 
it's really close to the tube station as well, so it's really easy to travel into South Kensington. And as it's right next to the Charing Cross campus, you can use the facilities there, such as the library. Although he feels that the quality of the rooms suffer and they were quite poor as things were pretty much falling apart, he felt that a lot of people would struggle to stay there for an extended period of time. The kitchen there is shared between four people, but it really isn't the nicest. Although there is a renovation going on right now, but we don't know how much or what they have improved. So now that I've gone into depth about each of those halls, I'm going to be putting up some side by side comparison tables up on screen now, so make sure you pause the video whenever I show each of these comparisons. So the first comparison I want to show is the room types and the rents available for each one. The next comparison I'm going to put on screen now is the features available at each of these halls and how they compare against each other. And finally the time it takes to get into campus. And this includes via tube, via cycling, via bus, and also via walking. So everything there is covered. With that said, I hope you guys have a good day. I've been Devify, and I am out.